Good morning. Almost happy 4th of July. Certainly around us last night, fireworks started going off, which was kind of interesting considering we're still recovering from a fire that consumed over a thousand homes and businesses in Boulder County. But they weren't going as high in the air, uh, I noticed, but uh, it was still kind of weird. Um, and I'll have more to say about this is a interesting time to be celebrating our nation's history and birthday in light of uh, the events of the past couple of weeks. Um, but welcome to those of you online. Hi, you're looking great. Thanks for joining us. The, um, we are reminded that uh, we live in challenging times and uh, the war in Ukraine only worsens uh, for the Ukrainians. And um, so we want to continue to pray for peace and share a prayer that is called the World Peace Prayer that speaks to our desire for life, for truth, for hope, for trust, for love, and for peace. So let's join together in the saying of the World Peace Prayer. O oh God, lead us from death to life, from falsehood to truth. Lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe. Peace, peace, peace. Amen. Marty. Good morning. It's nice. Is that on? Okay. It is nice to see you in person. I'm usually up there. Uh, call to celebration. The time for healing the wounds has come. We pledge ourselves to liberate all our people from the continuing bondage of poverty, deprivation, suffering, gender, and other discrimination. There is no easy road to freedom. None of us acts alone, or can we achieve that success acting alone. We must therefore act together as a united people. For reconciling, for nation building. Thank you, Marty. And now I invite you to rise in body, mind, or spirit and remind you that we recommend masking for congregational singing at this time as cases in our area are going back up. And I invite you to join in our opening song, Imago Dei, about how we may respond to the image of God in each other. Is my guitar coming through? I can't tell from here. Are you hearing my guitar out in the pews? Okay. Imago Dei, Imago Dei, born in the image of God are we. Imago Dei, Imago Dei, called to compassion, born to be free. How shall we live as images of God? How best reflect the wonder of our Maker? Humbly we will walk with mercy, respond, and know the essence of love is always with us. Imago Dei, Imago Dei, 
Born in the image of God are we. Imago Dei, Imago Dei, called to compassion, born to be free. How shall we love the neighbor filled with greed? How best respond to those consumed by hatred? Look beyond the fear that keeps them from knowing the abundance of love that's always with us. Imago Dei, Imago Dei, born in the image of God are we. Imago Dei, Imago Dei, called to compassion, born to be free. Then shall we see the images of Christ. Then shall we know that God is in our neighbor. Humbly we will walk with mercy, respond, and know the essence of love is always with us. Imago Dei, Imago Dei, born in the image of God are we. Imago Dei, Imago Dei, called to compassion, born to be free. Imago Dei, Imago Dei, born in the image of God are we. Imago Dei, Imago Dei, called to compassion, born to be free. Imago Dei, Imago Dei, born in the image of God are we. Imago Dei, Imago Dei, called to compassion, born to be free. We are called to compassion, born to be free. Our first reading is from Galatians 5. Christ has set us free for freedom. Therefore stand firm and don't submit to the bondage of slavery again. You were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only don't let this freedom be an opportunity to indulge your selfish impulses, but serve each other through love. All the law has been fulfilled in a single statement. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour each other, be careful that you don't get eaten up by each other. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against things like this. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the self with its passions and its desires. If we live by the Spirit, let's follow the Spirit. The second reading from Joanna Macy and Chris Johnstone, Active Hope. When we identify with something larger than ourselves, whether that be our family, a circle of friends, a team, or a community, that becomes part of who we are. There is so much more to us than just a separate self. Our connected self is based on recognizing that we are part of many circles. It is from our connected selves that much of what people most value in life emerges, including love, friendship, loyalty, trust, relationship, belonging, purpose, gratitude, spirituality, mutual aid, and meaning. Living God, touch our hearts through these words and through your spirit. Kindle our imaginations Breathe your life into our actions As we dream and work to shape Your new world Good 
Well, the world has changed since last we gathered in this place to worship. Um, I guess somebody can make a case. Well, not really. It's just continued um, to be uh, what we have helped create it to be. Um, so it's an it's, uh, interesting, interesting time. I, it, it's been a struggle, I think, for many to feel like celebrating the 4th of July this year. Maybe not for you, and what I, <laughs> what I w hope that we can do this morning in the, our stream down worship service, which calls for a stream down sermon, and I'll try to stream it down as best I can. We'll see what, we'll see what happens. You know, if a child is brought into worship for the first time, and she watches the minister take off his watch and elbows her mother and says, Mommy, what does that mean? And the mother looks at him and says, absolutely nothing. Um, <laughs> Now, I know I've used that before, but we all have shorter memories than we used to. Um, so as we were preparing for today, there's a very real part of me that wanted to hang the flag upside down, outside. Better minds than mine uh, spoke wisdom to me. And um, at almost 68, I'm finally learning to listen. Um, because it is a time of distress for us as a nation. And I don't want to underplay that. I still follow a group from my Baptist past called the Baptist Joint Committee on Religious Liberty. Good friends have led that agency in the nation's capital over the last 30 years. And, uh, or maybe even longer than that. And they have recently published a work called Christian Nationalism and the Insurrection on January 6th and pulled together a handful of scholars from across the United States to look at it. One of those scholars is Jamar Tisby PhD, he's a historian of race and religion. He's the author of The Color of Compromise, The Truth About the American Church's Complicity in Racism, and How to Fight Racism. And what I found particularly helpful in reading his portion of this publication was that he cites Frederick Douglass the great orator, abolitionist, and at one time a licensed preacher in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the AME Church. As a social justice advocate, he maintained respect for the so-called founding fathers. And in doing so, Tisby points out, he writes about the meaning of July 4th for the Negro. Now this is in 1852. There is no civil war. There is no emancipation proclamation. And so as we gather today realizing that freedoms we've lived with for 50 years and not as long as 50 years, but certainly the the right to privacy upon which Roe was based has suddenly been, been taken away. And how, how, do we, how do we celebrate that? Tisby cites Douglas. The point at which I am compelled to view the Founding Fathers is not certainly the most favorable. And yet I cannot contemplate their great deeds with less than admiration. 
Tisby goes on. Douglas held a realistic view of the men who wrote the founding documents of the nation. Many of them were slaveholders who sought to profit off the exploited labor of African descended people. He also knew them to be fallible human beings just like any other. Yet Douglas also admired their vision and fortitude in helping forge a new nation. Douglas called these individuals statesmen, statesmen and patriots and heroes. And the reason he does that is, as he writes, with them, justice, liberty, and humanity were final, not slavery and oppression. That helped me. That helped me understand that we can both celebrate the freedoms that we have in this nation, the freedoms that are at risk, we can even celebrate the nation's birthday knowing that our work for our justice has changed, has gotten deeper, and has gotten more demanding. And quite frankly, some of us were hoping that next generations could pick up the mantle and move forward. I've been out taking pictures of late. Peter, Show us one from up above Flagstaff Restaurant on Flagstaff Hill. In At the base, all of the major roots of that tree are exposed to the elements. Now, obviously, the tree is still alive, so it must have a taproot going down somewhere, drawing nutrients up. But up close, you can see the multiple lightning strikes that the tree has experienced. We can tell by the soil being blown away from the base or the tree growing out of its um, original space that it's exposed to the elements. And if you've spent any time in Boulder, you know we get gale force winds. The Marshall Fire was propelled by 115 mile an hour winds. That's why it couldn't be stopped. Firefighters couldn't even put water on it till 7 p.m. that evening. But this tree has endured the storms of decades, if not centuries. It doesn't look to be a century old, but I'm not uh, one who can judge the age of a tree that has experienced the kinds of storms this one has. What I want to remind us of is that we must, yes, grieve the pain, the loss, the fear of more freedoms possibly to be curtailed banned or lost, we don't, but we don't have to go into despair. We have been through some pretty tough times. I was nine years old when John F. Kennedy was assassinated and I learned about it from a transistor radio that a friend had snuck into school that day and we were walking home together. We thought to listen to music. President of the United States assassinated and I live in Houston, Texas and it happened in Dallas, Texas. God, help us. And then Martin Luther King, then Bobby Kennedy, Malcolm X and the list goes on and on. Some people act like that the protests over George Floyd's death that unfortunately led to violence and burnings and, and people harmed and killed um, was a new thing. Now, none of us can, re or at least I can't remember, learning about the Tulsa race massacre and the destruction of Black Wall Street and Greenwood community of Tulsa 
where nearly or over 300 individuals were killed, over 1,000 homes were destroyed, and 10,000 people were left homeless, all because supposedly an African-American teenager had assaulted a elevator operator. What happened was he stepped on her foot. By the next day, it became that he tried to rape her. And they forget about that. Or they never learned it because I never learned it. I mean, not because I never learned it, but because it wasn't taught. And we don't want schools to teach that now, right? Vietnam, civil rights, dark nights, Watergate. We get through those times? Yes, we did. We've gone through personal hardships and challenges, <laughs> lost jobs, marriages that didn't work out, relationships ended that we wished had continued, all kinds of things, illness. And we're still here. And we're still singing. We're still marching. Wow, wasn't Pride Parade last week wonderful? I don't know about you, but coming on the heels of the decision of, about the right to privacy and the, the Roe decision, it was food for the soul. Over 535,000 people. We may have had more people at Pride Parade than the avalanche had at the victory celebration. Think about that. Pretty cool. We'll get through the, these days. We'll get through these days. We, like that tree, have been through it before. And yeah, we wish we didn't have to go through the fights for justice again. But if we do, we do have some experience, do we not? Have we not been there and done that? Is it not possible for us to be there and do it again? Well, maybe not with as much energy as we once had, but we still can make up for the loss of energy with the assurance of experience that in the end, slavery and oppression lose and freedom wins. The reading from Galatians, where Paul says, it is for freedom that you've been set free. We have freedom to live free. Now with that freedom comes responsibility at how we use it. And let's be honest, a lot of us thought that Roe being set a law meant that it couldn't be overturned. They fooled us not once, not twice, but three times in Senate hearings. Confirming justices. How do we live responsibly in these days? Paul says, look, if you bite and devour each other, be careful that you don't get eaten up. And right now the division in our country is driving us to bite and devour each other. Unfortunately. So what are we going to do about it? If we are people of the Spirit, Paul says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I haven't graded myself on that lately. Have you? Then Joanna Macy and Chris Johnstone in Active Hope says, look folks, it's our connectedness to others that gives our lives meaning. 
I try to stay connected with people who see the world very differently than I do, who call me all kinds of names and act as if I suffer from this great disease called being a liberal. Now, I could respond to this person by saying, you know, seeing others as a disease was what led to World War II in Germany under Hitler. And he would hear me calling him a fascist and that wouldn't move the agenda very much, would it? But I don't have to respond in kind. The biggest tragedy in many respects, not the biggest, but a big tragedy of the pandemic has been how it's isolated us from one another, from our families, our friends, and even those who see the world differently. A lot of folks are trying to come back together and we uh, recently had dinner with friends who, who said, we've just agreed that for our relatives who live in rural Minnesota, when we get together, we're gonna to talk family, but we're not gonna talk politics. We're going to talk family, but we're not going to talk religion. We're going to talk family, but we're not going to talk gun control. Because our friends who live in Colorado are very different from family who live in Minnesota. We diminish ourselves, and we were diminished by being isolated and cut off. Maybe the new test of the fruit of the Spirit isn't what we've read from Galatians, but it's what we read from active hope. It is from our connective selves of much of what people value, most value in life emerges, including love, friendship, loyalty, trust, relationship, belonging, purpose, gratitude, spirituality, mutual aid, and meaning. Now, it takes two people to build relationships. And sometimes it only takes one to tear them down. And we can't be responsible for how others react to our efforts to stay connected. But if we're going to enjoy the freedom to live free, we are called to be people who share our light and tell our story. Another picture from the spiritual event that took place Wednesday night. Now, let me just point out, do you see that silver thing to the right of the American flag? That's the Stanley Cup flag. I just want you to know, and it's the 2022 version of it. This is obviously from Ball Arena. Earth, wind, and fires on the stage to be followed by Santana. We got these tickets in 2020, January 2020, and the concert was just held this week. So what Earth, Wind, and Fire asked folks, asked the arena to do was to turn off all of the lights. This is the picture of Ball Arena lit almost exclusively by lights on cell phones. Look at the power of the light. When we are connected and we stay connected to like-minded folks, when we are in community, when we share our light and others share their light, light really does overcome the darkness. Hope emerges. We make a difference. All of us together are stronger than any one of us is by ourselves. We don't, have, we don't have to advocate for justice and work for justice alone. We're in this together. Santana came out and said, trust the light, trust the spirit, trust your soul. Now, he's not a theologian necessarily, but he was speaking truth as he saw it. 
I've got a 40, almost 42-year-old daughter. I was quite a young man when she was born. Not really. Um, my son was born three years later. Laura came through town last Sunday. Um, she had been at a, uh, a counseling retreat down in uh, Buena Vista. I can't bring myself to call it Buena Vista, but, you know. And we started talking. And she has always been what she would call a pro-life voter. And she said, you know, Dad, I've changed. Still have my beliefs, but it sure is better when we trust people to make decisions for themselves rather than trying to impose it on them. The shooting in Uvalde has so scared her about the safety and well-being of her children, my beautiful, precious, and incredibly intelligent grandchildren, um, at least in my eyes, um, that she said to me, I'll never vote for anybody opposed to gun safety legislation again. Then the other drive to and from the airport, we talked about our story, our history things she didn't understand as a child that happened in our nuclear family. And she was incredibly interested in ways that she's never been. I say that to say this, our next generation of activists, eco-justice activists, social justice activists, gun safety activists. They're coming up. They don't have our experience. They don't know our history. They don't know our stories. But we can tell them what life was like before these things were taken away because we lived through it. We can share our light. We can share our history. We can share our stories. And they will make difference. May we pray. God, thank you for reminding us that your spirit indwells us and gives us strength, gives us hope, brings us peace. Your spirit allows us to see that others, even those with whom we strongly disagree, are created in your image and part of the world for which Jesus is said to die for. As we enter into a new day of doing work at for justice in ways that we haven't had to do it for a long, long time. Help us not to grow weary in well-doing. Help us to share our light and our story. Help us to understand like a, a wind-blown, storm-tossed, lightning-struck, fire-endangered tree, we can survive these times and even thrive. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. We're not back to passing the offering plate here in the sanctuary yet, but we do have one on the uh, communion table. Um, it's there for your benefit. For those of you online, uh, you can send it to 400 South William Street, Denver, Colorado. Um, 80209, I believe. Uh, thank you is what I want to say to all of you who continue to support the life and ministry of Wash Park and make possible our work uh, and advocacy for justice that we do.
Marty. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Giver of gifts, receive the resources we bring. May they bless our community and our world. May bonds of scarcity be broken as we meet the needs around us with the gifts that you have first given to us. May we be gladdened by giving and rejoice in generosity. Amen. Now I invite you once more to rise in body, mind, and or spirit and recommend masking as we sing, we are building up a new world. And we are, we still are. We are building up a new world. We are building up a new world. We are building up a new world. Builders must be strong. Courage, siblings. Courage, siblings. Don't get weary. Courage, siblings. Don't get weary. Courage, people. Don't get weary. Though the way be long. Rise, shine. Give God glory. Rise, shine. Give God glory. Rise, shine, give God glory, children of the light. We are building, we are building up a new world. We are building up a new world. We are building up a new world. Builders must be strong. Thank you, those who are here in the sanctuary. Thank you, those who have joined from online. Peace. Happy Fourth of July. Whatever you do to celebrate it, enjoy the day. May God be with you. Amen. Okay. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And sometimes that's just the way to do it. Right. Oops. <laughs>